Well, Mr. Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid, who has yet to play a second of basketball this season, uh, had a little altercation with a uh, reporter who covers the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, he shoved them. Whoever reported and said he punched them, I was actually hoping that he punched them just for, you know, I just want to see what they're going to talk about on Inside the NBA. But uh, this reporter, I'm um, trying to find buddy name, uh, but this reporter, uh, Marcus Hayes, uh, from the Philadelphia Inquirer, he had an article that he put out, and he basically said in here, questioning uh, Joel Embiid's professionalism, saying, Joel Embiid consistently points to the birth of his son, Arthur, as a major inflection point in his career. He often says that he wants to be great, to leave a legacy for the boy named after his little brother who tragically died in an automotile, automobile accident when Embiid was his first year with the Sixers. Well, in order to be great at your job, you must have the first show of the world. Embiid has been great at just the opposite. Now his 11th season, he consistently has been in poor condition. The poor condition apparently seems to have delayed his debut this season. Uh, Embiid fired back saying, um, people say, I don't want to play. I've done too much to the city, and I put myself at risk, and I do think that that's bullshit. Now, when he confronted Marcus Hayes about this in the uh, locker room, and then he uh, pushed him. He pushed him, and he told him, uh, word for word, the next time you bring up my dead brother and my son again, you are going to see what I'm going to do to you, and I'm going to have to live with the consequences. So this is what I feel about this. First of all, uh, shout out, this is a big week for athletes telling journalists and fans to stay in their place, which I am 100% for. Um, we saw Jason Kelsey. Uh, Jason Kelsey took a, a Penn State fan's phone and uh, broke it because this person called him the F word. Uh, if you don't know what the F word is, put two and two together. Uh, that <laughs> You know exactly what it is, and, and, and Jason Kelsey had enough of it. And, and actually, he called. Uh, Jason's brother, you saw Travis Kelsey that Jason had nothing but broke the phone. And then you have this. I know some people uh, were clutching their pearls. You should never, you should always keep your emotions in check. Well, I think that Marcus Hayes should have kept himself in check. You can get your point across of saying that Joel and B needs to play games, which he does need to, without bringing up his kids or his dead brother. You're lucky he didn't beat you up there. He gave you actually a warning and he actually shot you a solid by not doing what he really wanted to. And I just feel like it was petty. And I, I like that journalists or anybody who's in the media, you should you should stand up on your word. I never say anything on this show or on any of my platforms that I wouldn't say to that athlete's face. And that's the problem you see with this. I have no problem with Joel Embiid did. Is he going to get fined? Probably. Is he going to get suspended? Probably. But that's worth it. You got to watch your mouth in these particular situations. Um, Pav, what did you think about uh, this altercation between Embiid and uh, Marcus Hayes is dude black. Yeah, uh, I have no idea, but again, name, like, name like Marcus Hayes. I'm assuming Marcus, ha he... Marcus Hayes sound like a nigga. So. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, he's, yeah, yes, yeah, he's yes, he's black. Yes, he's black. Okay. I mean, just what makes you type that up? Like at <laughs> any point in time when you was typing that, you didn't feel no way about like typing that. Now, granted, I think we are all fair to you know critique Joel Embiid for his at times. I don't want to say the man don't never want to play because I don't never think the man don't never want to play. I never think that that's what it is. But your best of your best ability is your availability, and a lot of times Joel Embiid is not available. So if you want to critique him being not available, that is which is in the bounds of basketball. That is completely and honestly fair. But when you start bringing up, for instance, I've been covering the league for. Uh, as far as being a reporter in locker rooms consistently since uh, 2019, I would never think to bring up somebody's family or like their off the court things in talking about things between the lines. Right. Just because of the fact of that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. And that's how you get people mad at you because you bring it up things that don't have nothing to do now if this was a situation where he went out there and shot two for 30 and he wrote an article and said like you need to play better because that was disgusting you shot two for 30 and then the man go up there and push him it's like come on bros you know you played bad you shot two for 30 but in this situation you bringing up a man's family um yeah in like in theory you should always keep your emotion in check and all those things like that and does he deserve to be fine suspended yeah sure whatever but at the same time it just don't work like that. Like human emotions come into play. And again, you talking about somebody's dead brother and their kid, bro. Like what, like, again, what makes you at the, in the process of typing this article, what makes you type that up? And then what publication put this out? Like, who does he work for? Uh, Philadelphia Inquirer. 
Nobody at the Philadelphia Inquirer read that and thought that, hey, brother, maybe we right. shouldn't do that. Like, so nobody involved in all of this. But this goes back to a whole another deeper problem with, I don't know, journalism in this day and age. And like, you know, I, 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 I granted, I wasn't, you know, around in the 70s and the 80s. I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? But I think that with like the uh, standard rules of journalism, there were quite, po granted, I don't know. I, I wasn't there, so I don't know. But there were certain things that probably wouldn't get printed or that if they did get printed, they got screened a little bit more before they got printed. And I, one, it, I just don't see, especially this, this wasn't a blog. This was a Philadelphia Inquirer's actual newspaper, right? Like you go yeah, and buy it, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's a yeah, it's a, it's a newspaper. Yeah, yeah, like I don't like I don't understand. I think that's I know, where Stephen A. started there, right? That's where Stephen A. came from. But, yeah, and, yeah. but Pappy, to your point, it's it's the exact opposite. This is one of those old school newspaper moments because I'm I'm somebody who like kind of like bang went into detail last week. I grew up reading the newspaper and like prime example back at the crib, Jay Mariotti used to say all type of wild oh, shit. Hey, remember, remember them, called they them, all used uh, to do it. Mm -hmm. Ozzy called him out. <laughs> yeah, they all called him out, but no, like that's this that this was really an old school moment. He yeah. wanted to get you know some shock value when people were reading those last sentences. Or the that, first, the first Skip Bay, the first Skip Bay was Peter Vesey. Oh, my God, yeah. smack that Peter Vesey. They know they wanted to cook him, but no, like um, I just think as a writer, while I understand you want to make a point, and you know. You should never take personal shots. That was clearly, that was personal. That's something that's personal to Joel. Even if it's something that he said in a public space that was meant for public consumption, that's a, clearly something that's very personal to that man. We'll be talking about death of a family member and a child. So when you do that to try to get your point across, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Like in terms of how it was written, it was well written, but it was just, you don't say that. Like, you know, we get it. We want Joel to play. We know, you know, the whole trust the process and everything he's been through with his injury history. But to take that type of shot is unnecessary. You, you, if you've been hired by the Philadelphia Inquirer, you're intelligent enough to where you can write that up in a different way to drive home the point that Joel, we want to see Joel play because that's what it, that's what it comes down to. So, like, I, there's like again, as somebody who's been in the locker rooms as well, me personally, I feel like. The media should talk to them once they done getting dressed, like outside of the locker room. I'm not. I've never been yeah, a big that, fan yeah, of that. Yeah, I've never been a big fan of that. Yeah, like yo, this niggas is in here. Like, hi, well, what yeah. are you doing, yo? You crying yeah, around yeah. here while you getting dressed? What well, are we I doing? Know, I know the Bears have already changed that rule. We can't interview them in, in the locker room anymore. They have a interview po uh, podium in the hallway of the locker room now. Yeah, so they all need that. Bro. Yeah, they're, they're gonna start doing oh, that more. Sorry. Also, all of them granted. I was I was there when Montrez caused a mutiny because <laughs> when they got when they when they lost by 40 to Memphis and he said something that got printed and then it caused a mutiny in the um locker room. I say this to say all of them don't need to talk. Yeah, some of them people you don't need to be able to walk into them and ask them a question. Yeah, that's facts. That's very true. And I, I'll say this too. I think Jamel Hill put the best on Levitar today. She said she read the article uh with the comment. And then she read it without the comment. And she said the article was just as good without the comment. And he's exactly. able to get his point across without the comment. And she feels that maybe he was doing that on purpose. And she said, if you're gonna do that on purpose, you gotta you gotta face the consequences that come with that. Bang, what you think about it? You on mute, bro. You on mute, dog. Damn it, god damn it. I thought <laughs> damn it, I thought I hit that motherfucker. Um, but no, I read it. Um, because I was at the event, um, the fourth rope event, and I had hit my man in Philly, like, yo, what the fuck happened? Why why they saying Joel like beat up a reporter or some shit? Um, but then in finding out and looking at why, I was just like, Oh, this is when this is when the athletes get it right about journalists. Folks gotta get away from that shock jock type shit. And journalists got that shit bad, too. He didn't have to mention none of that shit. In fact, you didn't even have to insinuate any of that shit. So like Pav said, hey, you got to face the consequences of that shit. You can't sit up and think, and then let me speak directly to journalists. You can't sit up here and think you can say what you want to say just because you got the pen. You can't hide around reportedly and allegedly and according to sources and all of that shit without getting checked by somebody. I'll use the Stephen A. Smith, Jalen Brown as an example. And I think that's a light example because Jalen Smith was like, yo, I ain't really mad at you. I'm mad at your sources for not putting the face on it. 
But yeah, as a journalist, you got to protect your sources. So I get it. But Stephen A. Smith has to face the consequence of because of what he reported, even though somebody else ain't going ain't gonna to put a name by it. So that's the shit that journalists, the L that we got to take when we have that information, we decide to report on it. On the flip side, when you have the nerve to be personal with somebody and then come in their area and try to ask them a motherfucking question and you don't think that it ain't beyond the pale for them to look at your ass and be like, man, get your bitch ass up out of here before I fuck you up or threaten you or anything like that. If you say something that's real personal, but you want to hide behind the pen. No, I think that shit lame as hell. I think that shit is so lame. Um, I think that it's so lame that. They should do something about Buddy. I ain't saying that they need to fire him, but they need to take him off that Philly beat because here's the thing. You run the risk of not only alienating with Joel and B, but what if the players say, yo, I don't really want to fuck with you, man. I don't if even want to talk to you. you going to do what you going to do? What you going to do to me and shit? So, nah, I think they need to have a conversation with Buddy and Buddy need to apologize. Could it be a situation like Tavon Diggs and the reporter out in Dallas? It could be some shit like that. Or it could be a situation where simply put, we don't fuck with you and your magazine because you disrespected one of our players in a terrible way and you ain't holding yourself accountable for it. Yeah.